Welcome to Visions of Victory, our weekly broadcast of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us where we remember the words of the psalmist David. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So sit back and relax because the next voice you'll hear is that of our pastor, Charles W. Kwan. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were intensely healed and strengthened. This morning, I want to share with you from the subject, rise up. Rise up. Turn to somebody and simply say to them, rise up. Rise up. Say it like you have confidence. Rise up. In Joshua Du Bois' book, The President's Devotional, he writes these words under this devotion entitled, Rise Up. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh -huh. rise up and walk. Rise up. walk. What confidence went in that command? What history fell from Peter's lips? Peter knew this Christ. He knew what Jesus had done. He knew who Jesus had healed. He saw the resurrection and ascension for himself. And it was in the fullness of that knowledge that Peter grew confident. He was confident in his own ability to heal, to speak wholeness, into a broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. May we have that same confidence. May we look back and remember what God has done and then in full knowledge of his power move mightily in the world. May we declare to the most difficult problems, the most broken communities, those who are hurting the most in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. rise up and walk. Rise up. And then like Peter, yes. maybe take them by the hand and lift them up. Yes. May we as God's people this day Declare with confidence Amen. to our broken world that they can rise. That there's no power in this world that can hold them down. Do you believe that? Do you believe that in the name of Jesus, he can heal the brokenhearted? The power in the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. In that name, there's healing. In the name of Jesus, there's power. In that name of Jesus, there's help. Luke, the gospel writer, reports, Peter and John were going up to the temple for the three o'clock hour of prayer. There was nothing particular, significant about these two apostles of Christ going to a prayer meeting. They went as a matter of custom. That was part of their spiritual growth. Let me pause right here and say, my brothers and sisters, every believer ought to have a prayer life. If you're taking notes down, ask yourself, 
Do I engage in prayer enough? You ought to have a prayer partner. I ask couples when they prepare to share in their premarital counseling, have you ever prayed together? You'd be surprised at the couples who've been married a long time who've never prayed together. You're missing out on one of the most important aspects of your life. You can't pray and be mad at the same time. Don't get quiet on me. You can't pray and have an attitude at the same time. I feel like preaching this morning. You can't pray and have issues that you're dealing with and not be able to resolve them in the name of Christ. Pray over your children. They did not announce they would preach that day. They did not announce they would do any miracles that day. They were simply going to the temple to pray. It should be noted that Peter and John had different personalities. Peter was a practical man, a doer of deeds. On the other hand, John was an idealist, a poet, a dreamer. But they worked together in the bond of Christian love. Their differences did not separate them. Their differences did not stop them from doing the work of the kingdom. Different personalities were serving the same God. Do I have a witness that God can bring two or three together when you are united in Christ? They went to a prayer service. Oh, they were prayer partners. They learned how to pray, and they went to the temple for afternoon prayer at the gate, the beautiful gate. They met a man, Lord have mercy, carrying a mat who was crippled. It's in the book. Each day they brought him to the gate. He was a beggar. Begging was necessary. Part of his life, he was a beggar. There were no public relief funds, no social security, no medical assistance, just depending on the arms of people. I think we got a lot of beggars in church. Some of us are prone to be victims. Your vision of who you are sometimes determines what you are. If you think you're beaten, you're beaten. Your view determines your victory. Write that down. Your view determines your victory. If you feel like you're helpless, you're helpless. So one think of so he is. Anybody believe that you're more than a conqueror this morning? Anybody believe you're more than a conqueror? Anybody believe you're more than a conqueror? Rise up. This is no usual beggar. He was wise. He picked the best spot. He stood outside the church. <laughs> he knew folks was coming in with supposedly religion. So he stood at the gate waiting for people to walk by. And some people walked by. But Peter and John did not just walk by. They said, we don't have any silver or gold. But such as that we have, we give unto you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it's not how much you have, it's what you do with what you have that counts. <sighs> the gate, beautiful, was a, not only a good spot, but even though people passed him by, they were still persistent in their desire to help this man. We cannot walk by and see folks and not respond. I, I, I remember, you know, these young preachers, they talk fast. Like 
So, you know, you got to keep up with them. So, uh, 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 this, this is what I heard Tyrone. I went to this luncheon and uh, this preacher was talking fast. So he said, there was a lady in the church. She had four kids. She had four kids. She had four kids. She had four kids. I'm saying I got it. She had four kids. She caught the bus. She caught the bus. She caught the bus. And I'm saying to myself, now where is he going with this? And he kept on saying she had four kids. She caught the bus. She caught the bus. So then he said, and I decided that as pastor I was going to help her. Because she was faithful. She was coming to church all the time. Catching the bus with her four kids. She was, every time the door was open to church, she was there. She, she was right there. And I said, we got to help her. He told the congregation, we got to help Sister Jane. Because she's faithful. And she is trying to serve God. And she comes on the bus regularly and brings her kids. So I'm going to contribute $1,000 seed money and ask the church. So the church gathered in prayer and gave her money to buy a bus. A new car. So then the pastor said, I haven't seen her in a while. (laughs) Said, Brother Pastor, she joined another church. (laughs) Sometimes the people we help. You may not be able to give back the money, but Lord knows you can be faithful and repay the people back who helped you, do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? And, I, and, and let me say this, I don't have this on my manuscript, but I think that, and listen to me, deacons, because I'm going somewhere with this. I think that when we help people with benevolence, we might not ask them, it's not a loan, but we do expect you, when you get back on your feet, to sew back in so somebody else can be helped. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Anybody think anything wrong with that? So we're going to help you now, but when the Lord puts you back on your feet, you sow back in this ministry so we can help somebody else. I think that's fair, don't you? We have a responsibility. So the beggar gets help. It's amazing what he does because he jumps up and leaps because he's been begging for years. And they say to him, rise up and walk. Stop leaning on other people, but get up out of your situation and begin to make something out of your life. Stop begging and start serving. And the man jumped up, ran, couldn't keep it to himself. Rise up! Rise up! Stop complaining. Stop whining. But God has given you the power to overcome any and every circumstance. Doesn't matter where you were born, where you live, what your education is. Rise up and move out to the glory of God. He will give you the power with confidence. No weapon able to hold us down. I was amazed as I read the story of Maria Angelou. A woman who had been abandoned by her parents. Raped, quiet for years, and yet God gave her the capacity to rise up and become a world-renowned figure. She didn't dwell in what happened to her, but she reached out and grabbed hold of God's hand as a result of that. Her life will be remembered because she gave something because God gave her the power to rise up. Do I have a witness? Will God give you the power to rise up, to get up, and move out. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. 
and yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings, and said, morning, how are you? Fine thanks in you. It's amazing, wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit, despite it all, black and white, Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, Vow to celibate, we rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go rising. I, I... God has given us the power to overcome every situation in life. Do you believe you can rise this morning? Anybody believe that you have the power to rise, to rise, to rise, to do great things in his name, to rise, to conquer, to be victorious, no matter what you're going through, hell fire. No matter what people have tried to do to you, your enemy, you still can rise. Get up and rise. It's amazing what God will do. The Lord had put in my spirit in this message when I went to the Congo. I mean, when we had the processional. Devisa's dad walked in and anointed, anointed every pew, the pulpit, the choir loft with oil. When I came in this morning, I saw Narita anointing this sacred place. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, that when you are anointed by God, you can rise. This beggar who was blessed by the words of Peter and John, was able to get up and run and leap. Maya Angelo was able to rise above every obstacle in her life. And I believe that what God did for her, he's able to do for you. Do I have a witness this morning? Anybody here know that you don't have to be down no matter what situation you're in, but God has given you the power to rise and so this morning, I'm led by the Lord to ask God's anointing in this place that he might take this oil and that he might cause our brother in Christ, Carl, 
to know that God is able, that he might just bless somebody this morning with his power, with his love, with his grace, with his mercy, that God will watch over your mom and keep her in perfect peace that God will bless you in this journey that you're now going through, you and your husband, that God will keep you. Anybody able to know this morning that God will give you the power to rise and to be able to praise God from whom all blessings flow? I won't stay down. I can't stay down. I won't allow myself to stay down. But I want God to give me the confidence to get up, move out, and make a difference in this life. Do I have a witness? I will not. I will not surrender. I will not feel like I'm defeated. I will not give away to somebody else. I will trust God. I made a commitment to trust God. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness this morning? Is God able? Is he able? Is he able? Is he able? He's able. He's able. I know this is a tough journey for you, Linda. But God will keep you. He'll bless you. And Narita, I thank God for you and your faith. That comes in every morning and anoints this place with oil. I thank God that he has given us the power to rise over every obstacle. Yes. Bad marriage, you can rise. Yes. Unemployed, you can rise. Yes. Children giving you hell, you can rise. Yes. Friends turn their back on you, you can rise. Yes. Folks digging ditches for you, you can rise. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? I need a witness now. Say, yeah, I'm able to rise, 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 rise. rise. You can rise from drug addiction. You can rise from low self-esteem. You can rise from being brutally attacked. You can rise from past failures. You can rise from past sins. You can rise You can rise, you can rise. I want those who really believe they can rise, just come to the altar. If you really believe that you can rise from no matter what situation you're in, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the circumstance is, you can rise. Come with the confidence. Come with the boldness, the assurance. That you can rise. Marriage foreclosures, whatever it may be, you can rise. He's able. He's able. Do you know he's able? He's able, church. He's able. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. He's able. Oh, he's able. Be like Peter with confidence. Get up and walk. In the name of Jesus. Move from where you are to where God wants you to be. Move out of the valley and go to the mountain. Move out of self and go to God. Move out of complaining and start praising. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Move. He's able. Say he's able. Say he's able. Say it like you know it. Say he's able. He's able. He's able. Our 
gracious God, we thank you this morning for this story in the book of Acts that we have been able to see through your word how Peter and John on their way to the temple were able, oh God, to heal a beggar. But oh God, we know you still work, so we are able now to see how you're able through the life of Mara Angelo. Oh God, how you used her life to be a witness that you still work, <laughs> that you're still able to heal, that you're still able to rise up in us and allow us to do great things for you. We thank you, God, for her life. And for others, oh God, who have been able to rise up, become victorious in spite of circumstances. Some here at the altar have a story to tell and a God to glorify. How you raised us up over some hard, hard trials and troubles. But here we are, standing, able to give you praise. We're like the beggar, able to leap and shout that you blessed our lives. And we stand now, ready to rise up, leave our troubles behind, and walk on with assurance and with confidence that we have a God on our side. Oh God, right now, remind us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No matter what the enemy tried to do, we still can overcome. We thank you for that. We thank you for the oil that's on our head and for the power in our lives. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for those trials and troubles you've already brought us through. Because we know if you did it before, you can do it again. So Lord, right now, help us not to look at our troubles as if we're defeated. But oh God, help us to know that this is just a test. And if we're strong in the test, we'll come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No test, no testimony. No test, no testimony. But we got a testimony. We got a song to sing. We got joy to share. We got blessings to share. We got a God on our side. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're able to raise the sick. Able to heal the brokenhearted. Able to put lives back together. We hope you've been inspired and encouraged by today's message. You're invited to visit us at Bethlehem Baptist, a warm multicultural church with two Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. We're located in Springhouse, Pennsylvania at Penland Pike and Dager Road, only 15 minutes from Philadelphia. We hope to see you soon. God bless you, and remember, love God, serve people.